Welcome back. You're watching The Contrarians. We are joined now for our social media panel by Peter Bentley from the McKell Institute, but you're really only here in case these guy, guys get a bit too crazy at each other <laughs> uh, as our social media guys. Now, let me get this right. So we've got Robert closest to me and on the far end, George. Now, which one of you guys is the right winger, which is the left winger? Don't take offence at sitting next to each other. I'm the right winger. You're the right winger. Now, how far right are we? Let's just uh, get a gauge on this. Are you a fan of, uh, are you, a fan of uh, you know, Corey Bernardi? Um, I don't mind Corey. I think he's a good guy. Uh, oh, I some, think he's a good guy too, but that's uh, not the question. He some, Are you a fan of him as a politician? Um, I, think he's a, I think he's been a very reasonably effective politician, although not everyone agrees with him. So, All right. George, yeah. in your view, is Doug Cameron far enough to the left? No, or does he need to move a bit further across? Uh, Doug, Doug's <laughs> great. He's passionate. He's got true Labor convictions, and we need that. Yeah. I'd... And what about someone like Peter Bentley here? He heads up the McKell Institute. It's an unashamed left-wing think tank. <laughs> but as far as you're concerned, is it too far to the right? No, I don't think so. I think oh, Peter finds the right here. balance. <laughs> Peter finds the right You've balance. got Robert in between you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's too far left for my liking. <laughs> oh, no, we can gather Practical that. You think that Corey Bernardi is uh, pretty much where the benchmark is. Peter Bentley had Nick Griner come to their events. I mean, you don't get... <laughs> Practical and centralist. So. <laughs> Practical and centrist. How are you going to fight for funding when you guys are out of power in every single you know, state and territory well, around the we, country? We, we focus on real policy issues, and, and um, you know it's not about a partisan thing. You know we released we released clearly we released a recommendation uh, last year calling for more terrace housing in uh, Sydney, and uh, the New South Wales government uh, has oh, embraced that. Not partisan. So. Give me a break. <laughs> you, I mean, how funny is this? You know, now that it looks like the Labor government is just going down in flames, suddenly the McKell Institute. <laughs> to become non-partisan. Well, we've always been left and centre, <laughs> but your not partisan. <laughs> What's your position on Rudd, though? <laughs> well, my position is, uh, I think, uh, the Federal Parliamentary Labor Party have clear air now, and, uh, you know, it's uh, been a very just, tough I mean, how do you like 48 it? hours. You get Robert on your show, <laughs> and he just starts asking the questions. Any, anything else you'd like to ask, my guess? <laughs> What's your position on Corey Bernardi? <laughs> I, I like Corey, but his politics are different to mine. He's a social conservative. Actually, that's, that's not entirely true. He's a social conservative where I'm not, um, but his economic positions are a lot closer to where I sit. All right, I want to ask you guys this. Now, we've got you as our, uh, Mr. Right and Mr. Left uh, out of the social media Twitter sphere, and your hashtags, I think, are going to be coming across on the screen. If oh, they're great. not, we're not helping your followers. Sorry about that. <laughs> right. uh, let me ask you this. Australia's most unpopular Prime Minister takes on Australia's most unpopular opposition leader. Do you accept that? Uh, no, I think Tony Abbott's immensely popular out there. It's just uh, that the voters don't know it, but according to the polls. Well, look, the Liberals are leading, have been leading the polls for years now. So but his personal ratings are so bad. Well, if, he, if they hated him so much, they would be saying they're going to be preferencing Labor at the election. But no, 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 no. They hate the Labor Party so much <laughs> that they're willing to vote for the Liberals despite Tony Abbott. That seems to be the message. Well, I think he's still popular out there, especially in West, where I grew up. Western Sydney, I think he's popular out there. People like his message. Um, and I think the idea that he, is a, he hates women or he's unpopular, I think is not, not accurate. Well, the idea that he hates women is certainly not accurate. That's <laughs> yeah. the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But we'll move on from that. Um, let me ask you, George, what's your view on Tony Abbott, a bit of a soulmate? Um, no, I'd look, I, I think the mistake we do in the Labor Party is not respect Tony Abbott. But I think, um, I think he's just done a good job of being controlled and disciplined. And I can't wait to see the real Tony Abbott. He's <laughs> just... He, he, we all know what he was like. He was, he, his views on industrial relations, how he was as a health minister. Well, no, he was opposed to work choices. He was one of the only people in Cabinet that actually spoke out against it, apparently. Apparently. Well, but that, that, that's what all the yeah. reports are. They were the reports before he was leader, back well, when it actually hurt him for that to be the report. I think his position on industrial relations generally speaks for itself. And I, Read his book I don't think ones. they've had the opportunity to actually see a real authentic Tony Abbott. Um, and, look, he's... He's unpopular for a reason. People fear him. Julie Gillard's unpopular because she just hasn't had that clear air. And I think, you know, there's this debate always about popularity she, contests. She doesn't, she doesn't cut through Julia Gillard. She just does not cut through. Ever since she became the leader, she never cuts through. Every, from everything she announces, no one believes what she says. And that's the problem for the Labor Party. But Tony Abbott to goes out every day. He goes out every day. And yes, he's on message, and sometimes he can repeat that excessively, but it, it's effective in people. Peter, you look like you effective. want to recruit these guys people to your non-partisan think tank. <laughs> uh, absolutely. But you can't complain <laughs> that people are all about spin and not about policy. And you look at Gillard's record of actually getting some policy done. What? Like and now people are complaining media, that she's not, NBN, she's not full of spin. No, 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 no. Uh, Robert, slick. Robert, I'm, I reject that entirely. You can't say that her bid to censor the media got done because it failed. 
it did fail, but you know, they've tr this is not the first time. They started with trying to censor the internet a couple of years ago. That failed as well, thankfully. But you know, again, they've tried to get. Yeah, every, that's every, one that when I hang around every time on Twitter, I almost like think result, I had some sympathy for. But anyway, every, go on. every time they try and uh, they're, they're having difficulty out there, their first point of call is to go and censor the media or put in new reforms. But that's not, you know. The or reality issues is, for the disabled, or health spending, or education. Where's it, yeah, where's it being funded? How's it going to be funded, the NDIS? We still don't know. But yet you support it. We still, yes, we support it. Yeah, well, support they're just as bad. You're it. as bad as each other. <laughs> you know, you're spruiking an NDIS that isn't yet funded. You're attacking it for not being funded, yet your side of politics supports this unfunded NDIS. Well, I can't help the fact that they vote on things where they, don't, they haven't seen the funding. So, you know, that's my position is I would have wanted to see some funding First so you, so okay, you heard it here first on <laughs> Contrarians. Robert slams Tony Abbott oh. for supporting an unfunded NDIS. On, we, can use, we, can, we can use that on your pre-selection brochure if you ever decide to run. <laughs> now, let me ask you an honest question here. Um, let me, I'll ask you this, George. Okay. Do you honestly think that Julie Gillard's the right person instead of Kevin Rudd to contest the next election for the Labor Party? No, I think Kevin Rudd is the right person. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you get a Labor member on the show rather than a member question. of caucus. You asked an honest question and got an honest answer. <laughs> you but, did. You know, I think what Kevin Rudd did today is the right thing. Give her now clear air. Um, but, you know, uh, this will go on. People love Kevin Rudd. The affinity they have with Kevin Rudd. Do so you think he can come back? Because he said he won't. I don't think he can. I think, he's, I think he genuinely is a man of his word. I think what he said today, he'll stick by then why it. not retire? The trouble is these are inter external pressures. You know, the public still love Kevin Rudd. He should and, have resigned. And while you've got an unpopular, while you've got an unpopular um, opposition leader and that people that don't want, they fear Tony Abbott, they want Kevin Rudd back. And it's still a, system, uh, a, a symptom of what happened three years ago. Peter Bentley, you are part of the New South Wales right. The New South Wales right <laughs> wanted Kevin Rudd back. The rest of the party stuck with Julia Gillard. She is your Prime Minister. She's a Labor Prime Minister. Do you regret her being Prime Minister? No, not at all. Um, I think... The, the fact so you're of the selling is, your fellow New South Wales right buddies no, no, down no, the river? No, not at all, Peter. The, the fact of the matter is the, the last 24 hours have been extremely tough uh, for the public to, to watch a pretty unedifying sight and for every single member of caucus. Um, we all know them and everyone that was watching uh, the coverage last night, we saw how gruelling and challenging these things are. Now, this is very tough, but what has happened now is we have clear air. And it was on Tuesday night on Showdown we were talking about this. and. I made the point that if by Saturday morning we wake up and there has been a challenge and it's over and done with, then it will give the government clear air. And that's right. what we have now. Peter, you got the last word. Sorry, gentlemen, we are out of time. Robert, George, thanks for joining us on the show. Oh, Peter, you. thanks for being here as well. Thank, thank you. you very much for your company. Be sure and tune in to Australian Agenda on Sunday morning. Anthony Albanese, the leader of the government in the lower house, the manager of government business, will be our special guest live in the studio. That should be interesting. See you then.